Ford's Grand Tourneo Connect is a family-friendly vehicle that won't see you having to pack light. Yes, it's a van-based product. No, it doesn't constantly remind you of that fact. There's the option of up to seven seats in the kind of properly extended body style that direct rivals don't bother to offer. And carriage capacity that's even better than Ford's much bigger S-Max and Galaxy MPVs. A surprising product then that's as happy with passengers as packages. We'll deal with long loads in its stride and look after your life with its clever sync telemetry. In short, if you were shopping in this segment, you'd have to consider it. Style and practicality. Two mutually exclusive qualities, you'd have thought. Not according to most makers of compact MPVs. Without exception, they all claim somehow to have combined elegant looks with van-like capacity. I wouldn't blame you for being sceptical about that if you're shopping in this market. And in response, I'd direct you to this car, Ford's Grand Tourneo Connect. Ultimately, there's no way around this. For real van-like capacity, you really have to have a van. Still, at least these days, it can be a very nice one, a vehicle like this. What we're looking at here is essentially a lengthened version of the ordinary Torneo Connect, which is in turn the passenger carrying stablemate of Ford's compact Transit Connect van. This grand model is for families who like the idea of van based people moving transport, but have the occasional need to carry up to seven people. You might think that to be hardly a new concept. Citroen, Peugeot and Fiat have been offering products like these for years with their Berlingo Multispace, Partner TP and Doblo models. In every case though, the same body style is used where the five or seven seats are fitted. To find a car of this kind properly lengthened to more easily accommodate a third seating row, you'd have to start looking at the commercial vehicle segment. Ford is arguably the first maker to provide such a thing properly developed for and targeted at the passenger car market. That's one unique selling point here. The other is that this Grand Tonneo Connect claims more car-like credentials than any model of this kind has previously offered. From interior furnishing to handling response, it's pretty much the equal of any compact MPV you might care to name, except for the fact that it's far cheaper than most of them and much bigger. Sounds appealing, doesn't it? Let's check this car out. Aren't motoring journalists pretentious? Have you ever heard one urging you to buy a van-based MPV? No, I haven't either. Most scribblers wouldn't be seen dead in a vehicle like this one. They're lost, as far as I'm concerned. All you ever hear in reviews of van-based people carriers are the negatives, the vague handling, the boxy utilitarian shape and so on. But what about the positives that come with the LCV-derived approach? The high driving position, the dash-mounted gear stick that's beautifully positioned for your palm, the great door mirrors with their separate sections, the excellent glassy all-round visibility. All these things endear me to cars of this kind. In terms of the dynamics though, I must confess that I wasn't quite sure what to expect from this one. After all, you don't buy any vehicle of this sort if your priorities lie in sharp standards of ride and handling. And whatever their other virtues might be, Van-based MPVs traditionally don't provide that. Or at least, some of them don't. This model, though, is based on a van that, well, kind of does. I've been running a Transit Connect van on long-term tests for the last few months, and I have to tell you that it's a better, sharper, and more enjoyable drive than most of the cars I test. To be fair, it ought to be, given that the underpinnings beneath are pretty much the same as those used by Ford's much lauded Focus, C-Max and Cougar models. In other words, if any car of this kind was ever going to cut the mustard in this respect, it was always going to be this one. Like any LCV-based product, it handles better fully loaded, but even when there's no one in the vehicle but you, cornering is predictable. 
body rolls well controlled too. So roundabouts can be taken at speed without the connect rolling about alarmingly. Now, after my experience with the commercial vehicle version, I was prepared for that. The changes with this passenger model though, center in on ride and refinement. Even bumpier roads don't phase it, and though at speed, the large door mirrors do create a bit of wind noise. Otherwise, the cabin is impressively hushed for a car of this kind. For this second generation Torneo Connect model, the rattly old 1.8 litre TDCI diesel has been pensioned off and a more refined and efficient 1.6 litre Duratorque TDCI diesel unit inserted in its place, offering a choice of either 95 or 115 PS outputs. It's the 95 PS power plant that will be by far the most popular of the pair and you can see why. It's much more affordable than the Pokia variant, yet the flexible 230 Newton meters of torque on offer is still enough to happily shift along a car full of people and facilitate a braked towing weight of up to 1200 kilograms. A pity though that you only get an admittedly slick shifting five speed gearbox. You have to stretch to the top 115 PS power plant for the sixth speed that makes motorway cruising that bit more refined. Go for this unit and pulling power improves to 270 Newton meters. The reality is that if you want the virtues of a van, then you'll need to put up with van-like looks. Fortunately, in this case, these aren't too utilitarian. In fact, from the front at least, a proud owner could even argue this grand Tornio Connect model to be rather smart. Here, you'll find the brand's familiar kinetic design look with its big trapezoidal lower grille and slender swept back headlights that take the edge off the boxy look. Aesthetically then, the stylists have done enough. This is very much a compact people carrier of its time and one of much greater focus, not least because Ford's best-selling family hatch provides most of the underpinnings here. But I mean that primarily because Ford's Torneo range now offers options that are far more individually suited to specific kinds of customers wanting van-based alternatives in the people carrying segment. Let me explain. Originally, in the Torneo lineup, Ford offered us a plushed-up little Transit Connect van with windows and five seats and a plushed up fully sized transit van with windows and nine seats. These days though, the Torneo range is very different, offering far more alternatives. At the foot of the lineup, small families can choose the Fiesta Super Mini based Torneo Courier, while at the other end of the scale, those with a permanent parking space at their local hospital's maternity wing can opt for the huge nine seater Torneo custom model. The Connect variants we're looking at here sit in between these two extremes, with the choice of either the standard Torneo Connect body shape or this lengthened Grand Torneo Connect model that's our focus in this film. This variant adding in an extra 400 millimeters in body length so it can properly accommodate a third row of seats. Now the fact that Ford are offering two separate body styles at this level is significant because no other direct van based competitor does. If you look at a rival Citroen Berlingo Multispace, Peugeot Partner TP or Fiat Doblo, you'll find that they all come in one shape only with just five seats as standard. If at your Citroen Peugeot or Fiat dealer you want your car to be able to take seven, you have to buy the additional chairs as an extra cost pack, but the vehicle itself won't be lengthened to accommodate them. As you might expect, the fact that this Ford has been makes a lot of difference in terms of the usability of those rearmost seats. For a start, access to them is easier because the extra length has enabled the sliding side door aperture to be 22 millimeters wider. The sliding doors, by the way, are something that you'll be very thankful for when the kids are getting in and out in tight parking spaces. But I was talking about the benefits of the length and body style. Well, here's another. 
Unlike the optional fixed in place third row chairs that rivals offer, these ones can slide backwards and forwards so that you can prioritise space for either people or the packages that they must carry in the boot behind. It's a pity that the middle row bench doesn't do the same. In fact, to be honest, it's a bit disappointing that Ford has fitted a bench seat here at all. Most rivals have three individual second row seats that slide and recline for greater family flexibility. This one doesn't do either of those things. Still, on the plus side, it shouldn't be too difficult to fit three adults back here on short to medium length trips, and two will be very comfortable. Plus, of course, headroom from the boxy shape is ample, even if you're carrying loftier folk and or have fitted the optional panoramic glass roof. There's the option of useful lidded aircraft locker style overhead storage compartments, and you also get a useful storage bin recessed into the floor. Curiously, unlike rivals though, Ford only gives you one of these directly behind the driver's seat. Kids, meanwhile, will like the low window line, and if they're anything like mine, will doubtless nag you to get one of the top spec versions like this, fitted with seat back tables. At the wheel, it's all very car-like, though in a sensible utilitarian sort of way. The commercial origins, of course, mean that you don't get the fashionable soft touch plastics you'd find in, say, a Grand C-Max, but then are these really necessary on a practical family car? What's more important is that build quality from the Spanish Valencia factory seems very strong and the wipe clean services provided appear tough and durable. You view a clearly presented set of familiar Ford instruments through a four spoke wheel that moves for both reach and rake and you immediately appreciate a supportive driver's seat that's eight way adjustable on most models making it easier to get comfortable than it would be in some competitors. Talking of comfort, I love the way the gear stick sprouts from the bottom of the dash rather than the floor, so it falls to hand more easily. The mobile phone inspired centre console switchgear layout comes straight from the Focus and is relatively simple to use once you get used to the rather bewildering array of buttons and the fact that the infotainment screen at the top of the dash is a little small. On the positive side, the buttons are all quite large so that in colder months you can, if necessary, operate them wearing gloves. There's plenty of practicality too, though it's a pity that the base model doesn't get the lockable glove box you find further up the range. Otherwise, there's decent cubby storage for the paraphernalia of everyday family life, including reasonably sized door bins, plus two cup holders, and a coin holder by the gear stick, as well as a usefully deep bin further back where you'll find aux in and iPod sockets. There's also a useful recessed storage compartment ahead of the front seat passenger and an equally practical overhead storage area I'd urge you not to use for heavier items unless you want to open up the possibility of being clonked on the head the next time you make an emergency stop. On to luggage space. The LCV origins are, as you'd expect, very obvious when you approach the slab-sided rear end. But, as I've already suggested, that's all to the good when it comes to the space you can expect inside. Though the cargo area isn't very easy to get to if you find yourself backed into a tight parking space. That's because the huge rear tailgate requires quite a lot of space to be left behind before it can be raised. And there's no option to simply open the tailgate glass to get smaller bags in and out. Still, on the plus side, when it's up, you get the kind of shelter from the elements that a conventional rear hatch just can't provide. But just how much space is there back here? Well, not quite as much as you get in the direct van-based opposition. You're talking about 30% less than you'd get from a Bolingo Malta Space, a Partner TP or a Doblo, but don't be put off. There's still an awful lot of room here. The exact amount, depending on whether you order your Grand Tornio Connect in five or seven seat form. Since I can't really see why you'd pay the extra for the longer body style if you didn't want the extra third seating row, I'm going to assume that the car you have in mind will be a seven seater, like the one I have here. In the rare event that all the pews are in use, there's 302 litres on offer. Not massive, I'd agree, but pretty much the same as you get in a huge Ford Galaxy when similarly configured. That being a car that, when fitted with the same engine, would cost you nearly 40% more. 
and we're talking nearly three times as much space as you get in a similarly configured Ford Grand C-Max, which also incidentally is much pricier. With a Grand C-Max, as with pretty much any other compact seven-seat MPV, you have very little luggage space if all three seating rows are in use. Here you've got options, it's as simple as that. One of them is to push this third seating row forward. The low boot floor also means that chucking stuff in the back couldn't be easier, whether the item in question is a mountain bike or the family dog. Of course, most of the time you won't need all of the passenger carrying versatility that this vehicle offers and you'll only be using the first two seating rows. There are actually uh, 16 to 18 different seating permutations depending on the variant you're looking at. Now, if the first two rows are the only ones in use, then of course you'll be able to push this third row seating forward to free up 1,150 litres of total space. Fold the second row forward and the news gets even better. The 2,620 litre total capacity that frees up is significantly greater, 620 litres more in fact, than the total that in the same configuration you could expect from a much larger Ford S-Max uh, in the next class up. And that's a car that with the same engine would cost you around 25% more. Now the space available is even about 300 litres more than you could expect in the same configuration from the big Ford Galaxy I mentioned earlier. If the stuff to be carried is really long, let's say uh, something like a 2.9 metre long kayak, well there's even a folding front passenger seat so that you can deal with that too. This is in short a uniquely flexible family car. List pricing suggests that Grand Tornio Connect customers will be paying somewhere in the 17 to 19,000 pound bracket. This larger body style offered at a 2,000 pound model for model premium over the smaller Tornio Connect model. Bear in mind that simply selecting the Grand version of this car doesn't automatically get you seven seats. You have to pay an extra £240 premium for that extra third seating row, but I can't imagine many potential customers for this car not doing that. Under the bonnet, this bigger model doesn't get the two petrol engines offered in the Tornio Connect, but that's not really a problem given that almost all buyers will want a diesel anyway. For most, the 95 PS 1.6 litre TDCI unit will be quite sufficient, but the 115 PS TDCI power plant is worth looking at if you're regularly going to be undertaking longer, heavily laden trips. The feebler unit comes with the £400 option of a fuel economy pack, able to reduce your running costs by around 10%. As for rivals, well, let me try and give you a feel for your options here. Basically, the alternatives really fall into three categories. First, you could compare this model to a more conventional car-like seven-seat compact MPV, like, say, a Ford Grand C-Max or a Citroen Grand C4 Picasso. These kinds of people carriers are more obviously less boxy and van-like, but diesel versions of them are priced way over the £20,000 mark. In contrast, you can, as I've said, get your family up and running with a diesel Grand Tornio Connect from around £17,000. That's quite a difference, especially given how much more spacious this vehicle is. At the other extreme, there are, as you might expect, proper compact commercial vehicles out there with seats and windows. Van-derived products that don't even pretend to be car-like and aren't listed in the car brochures, but effectively aren't much different to what's on offer here. So, models like Nissan's NV200 Combi, Volkswagen's Caddy Life, or Mercedes Sight and Travel Liner could all potentially be on your radar if you're clued into the market and want really no-nonsense family transport. Vehicles of that sort aren't cheap, though. In comparison to the cost of this Ford, you expect to pay anywhere between £1,000 and £3,000 more for an equivalent version of one of the models that I've just mentioned. Nobody ever said that vans were cheap. Now I said there were three categories of potential rivals. 
is the third one that's really most relevant to this car. That of van-derived compact MPVs that, like this Grand Tourneo Connect, have been properly developed for and targeted at the passenger car market. This segment has long been dominated by Citroen's Berlingo Multispace and its brand stablemate, Peugeot's partner TP, the only really direct similar opposition coming from Fiat's Doblo. These three cars might initially look a little cheaper than this Ford, but bear in mind that you have to add well over £800 onto their asking prices if you want them fitted with seven seats. Include that in your calculations and you'll find that you're effectively looking at the same kind of budget, whichever model you choose. If having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a Grand Tourneo Connect that you really want, then you're going to need to know exactly how generous Ford has been with the standard spec. Well, let's see. It's a pity there's no alarm fitted and you also have to do without roof rails at the bottom and the mid part of the range. Still, all models do get daytime running lights, body coloured bumpers, dual sliding side doors and electric front windows, plus a decent quality stereo with steering wheel controls, a DAB radio, Bluetooth and voice control. Most though will want to stretch up to the mid-range ZTEC level that includes most of the nicer stuff you'll want, like air conditioning, front fog lamps, a quick clear heated windscreen, power heated mirrors, a lockable glove box, second row overhead storage, electric windows in the rear and perhaps most importantly the clever Ford Sync with emergency assistance setup. Now through this you can work MP3 players or Bluetooth enabled phones and access USB drives with voice commands, plus get text to speech messaging. Now, most importantly, the system automatically calls the emergency services in accidents where the airbags are triggered. Talking of airbags, twin front, side and curtain bags are all fitted as standard. Also included in the safety tally are ESC stability control and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Plus there's ABS braking with electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective and emergency brake assist that helps in panic stops that are advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning flashes. Plus there's a pedestrian friendly bonnet anti-whiplash head restraints and Isofix child seat mounting points on the two outer second row seats. Trailer stability control is also included if you've specified a tow bar, reducing dangerous trailer sway. If you're prepared to pay a little more, it's worth considering the clever Active City Stop System. Here, at urban speeds of under 20 mile an hour, a radar scans the road ahead as you drive, looking for potential collision hazards. If one is detected, the driver will get both visual and audible warnings, and the brakes will be primed. If he or she doesn't respond or isn't able to, the brakes will be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. And options? Well, niceties you'll find either at the top of the range or at extra cost include things like satellite navigation, cruise control with a speed limiter, a rear view camera and static cornering lamps that turn with the car to better illuminate the bends. I'd also want the additional child observation mirror that lets you keep a better eye on what the little horrors are up to in the back. And maybe also a tow bar. So to running costs, you might think that the smallest 95 PS 1.6 seater TDCI diesel engine would deliver you the most impressive results here. Actually though, that's only true if you pay forward another £400 for the fuel economy pack, which adds an active front grille shutter, a battery management system, smart regenerative charging and the start stop setup that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As a result, combined cycle economy is improved from 56.5 to 61.4 miles to the gallon and your CO2 return will be enhanced from 130 to 121 grams per kilometre. 
There's no economy pack option if you go for the Pokia 115 PS 1.6 litre TDCI model, but thanks partly to the fact that this variant has six rather than five gears, it's already pretty frugal and clean anyway. Expect 58.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 130 grams per kilometre of CO2. Either way, you're looking at a return marginally better than that you could expect from an equivalent Citroen Balinga Multispace or Fiat Doblo. A gear shift indicator is provided to help owners get somewhere close to those figures on an everyday basis. Cleverer is the innovative Ford Eco Mode system that continually assesses the effects of your driving behaviour on your fuel consumption. The setup analyzes your speed, your gear shifting, braking and anticipation levels, plus the number of short and long journeys you make. Smart software then advises you on how to improve fuel economy. What else? Well, there's the usual three year 60,000 mile warranty and insurance groupings that for the diesel 95 PS model vary between group 6E and 7E and on the 115 PS variant between 80 and 90. There are two kinds of compact people carrier you can buy these days. One based on a super mini like Ford's B-Max and more practical but pricier family-sized models based on family hatchbacks, like Ford's C-Max. Ultimately, what you're getting here is something bigger than C-Max size, with the option of seven seats, yet selling for B-Max style money. Sounds good to me. Unless, rather pretentiously, you think that some sort of social stigma is attached to van-based MPVs, there's very little not to like here if your priorities centre on sensible versatility. This Grand Tornio Connect, after all, ought to alter the way people perceive cars of this kind, changing, as it does, many of the fundamental things you'd expect from this class of vehicle. Its seats fold into the floor, its electronic safety features are cutting edge. Its engines can be high tech. It's even got clever equipment options and a modicum of style. Before this model came along, you had to stretch to something C-Max or scenic-like for all these kinds of things. Now you can get them in a converted small Ford Transit. That's not fair, of course. This is, after all, a lot more than a van with seats and windows. You don't have to spend long at the wheel to realise that. But the development team were fortunate in having such a good basic product to work with. Commercial vehicles have come a long way in recent years, which ought to have led to a vast improvement in cars of this kind. Here, at last, it has.